right, in this video we're going to look at the properties of continuity and what they do for us. Okay, so let me start off with a theorem. And we are going to assume that f and g, so if f and g are continuous, at A, so they're continuous at A, and let's let um, C be a constant. All right? Then we get the following things. F plus G is continuous at A. Let me write this over here. Is continuous at A. So the sum of two continuous functions are continuous. The difference of two continuous functions are continuous. If I take a constant times a continuous function at A, then it is the constant times that function is also continuous at A. The product of continuous functions are continuous and the quotient of continuous functions are continuous provided that g of a is not zero. So g might be continuous on its own at a, but if it's zero there, then it can't sit in the denominator of another function. Okay, so all of these are continuous at a. So, and you can sh verify the, these uh, truths with this theorem by applying your limit laws to the definition. Okay, so for example, if I said my function f of x is sine of x plus x squared. Well, sine of x is continuous everywhere, x squared is continuous everywhere, so f of x is the sum of two continuous functions is continuous everywhere. Okay, that's what that does for us. Likewise, let's say f of x equals e to the x over x plus 3. Well, e to the x is continuous everywhere, x plus 3 is continuous everywhere, so the quotient is continuous everywhere except when x is negative 3, because then I have 0 in the denominator, and so we have to throw that off, throw that out. Okay? Another very useful property is the composition of functions. So here's a new theorem. If f is continuous at b and the limit as x approaches a of g of x equals b, then the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x equals f of b. Okay, so if f is continuous at b and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is b, then the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x, so think of sending this limit inside, so think of the limit as x approaches a of f of I'm sorry, of g of x is b equals f of that limit. So what you really are thinking of is that this limit is equal to f of the limit as x approaches a of g of x. In other words, we can shove the limit inside this composition of functions. Okay, so to see an example of that, Let's look at this example. I want to use continuity to evaluate this limit, to evaluate this limit, the limit as x approaches pi over 4 of x times the cosine squared of x. So if I want to look at that limit, I'm going to use continuity. Now, here's something that I know. Let me rewrite this in a different way. 
x approaches pi over 4, x, I'm going to put that in parentheses, cosine of x, I'm going to rewrite that like that. Okay? Those mean the same thing. Now, here's what I know. The cosine of x is continuous everywhere, so it is certainly continuous at pi over 4, which means I can plug that in directly. All right? The square function is continuous everywhere, the a polynomial function is continuous everywhere, and so the product of these functions are continuous. So I really can do direct substitution on all these x values. So this equals pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 4, that quantity squared, which is pi over 4 times 1 over the square root of 2 squared, or pi over 4 times 1 half, giving us a final answer of pi over 8. Let's look at one more example of using our properties to answer a question about continuity. All right, let's say we have this. The limit as x approaches 5 of 4 times f of x minus g of x equals 9, and I'm given that f of 5 equals 4. I'm also given that f and g are continuous functions at 5. Okay? Alright, well, using the properties of continuity, I know I can split these up, and I can pull out a constant, right? So I can look at 4 times the limit. Actually, this is, I'm using the definitions of continuity and limits. I know these limits exist because of continuity. And because they exist, I can split them apart. So minus the limit as x goes to 5 of g of x equals 9. Now, since f is continuous at 5, the limit as x goes to 5 of f of x equals f of 5. So that's 4 times f of 5. Remember, that is the definition of continuity. Minus, now g is continuous at f of 5, too, which means this limit is equal to g of 5. And this difference is 9. I was given that f of 5 is 4, so this is really 4 times 4 minus g of 5 equals 9. So that means g of 5 is 9 minus 16, which is 7. So g of 5 is 7, and I used continuity to answer that.